Tonight, my guest is the noted surgeon and humanitarian, Dr. David Hamill. Our subject this evening is the urban child. Good evening, doctor, and welcome. Thank you, Des. What I'd like to know is, is what exactly has the experience taught you about the urban child today? Let me tell you about well, the urban child. T.S. Turner. Just point if you can't talk. Right. Hmm. Is the man inside? Yes, he is. <laughs> Nothing to be embarrassed about, honey. T.S. Turner. Yes, ma'am. You look big enough to get the job done. What job is that, ma'am? The name's Clara. I called you half an hour ago. You're not what I expected. I never am. Let's get right to the point. Are you going to take the job? Depends on what you want me to do. I want you to find the hooligans that are disturbing my peace. What about the police? What about them? Can you give me something to go on? Two hundred dollars a day. You pay expenses. That's not what I meant. I know that. Look, these have got to be local kids. I'm not the first person in my neighborhood that's had problems. I want you to get them off the streets before I put them in the morgue. Well, since you put it like that. Fine. Here. That'll get you started. Now I gotta get down to the police station. Tell them where they can stuff their weapons charge. You don't happen to know a good lawyer, do you, honey? Do you think this city is ready for a black mayor? I think it is. I think it's fine. Thank you. How about you, ma'am? Are you ready for a uh, reverend politician? No better man for the job. Am I on TV? Yes, you are, ma'am. How about you, sir? 
No comment. Thank you very much. Job done. Excuse me. Thank you very much. What is the platform of Reverend Pierce, this preacher turned politician who's brought out people all over the city in great numbers? Okay, cut it, Bill. Let's get some uh, close ups of uh, sad, tortured faces and. Uh... <laughs> hey, Joey! <laughs> hey! Come on, let's get this show on the road, man! I've been waiting here 10 minutes! Hurry it up! I can begin. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Don't you very make much. It too long. We get a big night ahead. Good evening. Friends and fellow citizens, my name is Dr. David Hamill. I am your moderator this evening. And it is a pleasure to see such a good turnout tonight. Look at us, I know from talking to your community organizers, it takes a pretty good reason to get you folks out on the streets after dark these days. Oh, yeah. It's a scary world. <laughs> my great pleasure to introduce to you the man who is going to be the next mayor of this city. Please welcome <laughs> Reverend Franklin Pierce. Thank you very much for those kind words. My friends, I have never ran for political office before. That's because you're too ugly! Hey. <laughs> the horrible truth of it is that that boy is probably right. My mama used to say, son, the law done made you about as plain as a potato. Aw, oh, man. Go back to the ghetto. Strike two. You don't want to be around for the next one. But the good law done made up for it, though. By giving me a heart that can feel. This is my city and I feel it. Pain. I feel the pain of all those trapped inside their homes by rampant street violence. I feel the pain and sorrow of the dispossessed who have no home at all. I feel the pain and confusion of the welfare mother who can't feed her children. I feel the pain of all people trapped inside disadvantaged lives that are not of their own making. Come on, give us a break. I feel the pain of those who bring pain into the lives of others. Hey! Say what, brother? Come on, tell him, Joey. Yeah, politics is dead meat, man. You see, we don't talk, we act. Because we're the future. future! The 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 future! shut up. Back off, man. Don't let them be heard. Let them be heard. No. Future, man!
you doing here? I'm doing what I have to do. I don't need people like him. What are you saying? It's them. They're the problem. Come on, come on, come on. Get out of here. Come on. I'm doing this for you. You are not. What are these scumbags telling you? They're my friends. They are not. Not as long as you're my son. Get away. What am I? Keep walking, and don't look back! Back up. Just take it easy. Take it easy, little brother. Just keep on walking, bigger man. All right. Stay right here. I just want to talk to you. I want to die. You hear me? I want to die. No, 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 no. You don't want to die. You're just saying that. I'm not listening to you. Look at me. I'm out here with you. I don't want your help. Everybody needs some help. Not listening to you. Tell them to stay away from me. All right, you two. Don't move. Stay right where you are. Tell them now. Hey, you over there. Leave us alone. Let us be. See, I told them. Now I'm listening. What's your name? What's your friends call you? I haven't got any friends, man! I want to be your friend. What can I call you? They don't call me nothing! You just stay away from me! Okay. I'm standing out here with you. I'm not gonna leave you alone. Kill my mother. I killed my mother! Do you hear me, man? I killed my mother! Yeah, I hear you. I don't believe that rap, man. How did you kill her? Don't come any closer! Don't come any closer! Did you know the bomb was there? Did you put the bomb there? You didn't kill your mother. But if you jump, you're never gonna find out who did. She's dead, not killed her. No, you didn't. Come on. Let's leave this place. Then we can find out who did it. Come on, little brother. Give me your hand. I'll give you my word. Come on. Please. Please. Ah! Uh, help me! Hold on! Hold on! Uh, Come on don't let me go! Come on! Come on! Come on. You up! Easy, man. What's going on? He's right. under arrest. Stand back, man. I'm doing it. I'll get this guy at my butt. Relax. Go. Get too ready for me. I can't do nothing. I can't do this. Get in the car. Get this. I'm going to keep my promise.
Joey, 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 Joey. What am I going to do with you? Tell me about the bomb, Joe. I don't know anything. Hey, come on. Look at me when I'm talking, will you? I said, look at me. How long you been with the gang, Joe? Come on. How about the gang? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about? Nope. What? No! Look at me! Do not lie to me. All right, Grove. Sorry to drag you from the barbecue. Bank. Whatever. Uh, where is he? They drilling him. Landon's trying to hang it on the kid. And? I don't think he did it. I'll take care of it. I don't believe you. That's enough, Detective. Landers, call him off. Evening, Counselor. Look, if they didn't plant the bomb, you got nothing to worry about, so just give me their names. Don't answer anything. I want him out of here. We reason to believe that Joe here and his friends set off a bomb at the community center. That is purely supposition. Yeah, we suppose he killed his mother, didn't you? Back off, Hargrove. I want to talk to my client. I want to talk to him alone. Now! I didn't kill her. Didn't you? Get your hands off him. Let him go, Detective. Look, this is not a juvenile rap. This boy is facing murder one. That's a very nice outfit. Must have been quite some party. I didn't kill her! I didn't do it. I believe you, Joe. I'm here to help you. After spending a lonely night in the county jail, 16-year-old Joseph Casper is being arraigned this morning on charges of first-degree murder for his part in the bombing that killed his own mother, Audrey Casper. He stands before Judge Ingrid Ball, a proponent of law and order here in the county, and is being defended by Amy Taylor, a very well-known person. Here she is now. Let's see if we can get an interview. Did he say why he did it, Counselor? No comment. Did he hate his mother? What kind of question is that? Well, under the circumstances, ma'am, I'd say it's a pretty legitimate one. Brother, if I was you, I'd check out the circumstances a little closer. Uh, thank you, sir. Joseph Casper, you have been charged with negligence in the use of an explosive, causing injury with intent, and first-degree murder. Do you realize the gravity of these charges, Mr. Casper? Young man! Yes, Your Honor. How does your client intend to plead, Counselor? Joe pleads not guilty, Your Honor. We intend to prove that although he was in the community center last night, he had nothing to do with the tragic bombing that killed his mother. There may be extenuating circumstances, but uh, we're just here to set a trial date. I agree. Your trial is set for one month. Your Honor, the charges are quite severe, and it goes far beyond extenuating circumstances. We'll need a little more time to prepare. You are remanded to the Newton Maximum Security Facility. Your Honor, my client is 16 years old. The evidence linking him with this crime is at best circumstantial. I would like to suggest an alternative to incarceration. Proceed, Counsel. The foster home run by my associate's aunt, Martha Robinson, has been used on several occasions for young offenders. What about the bond? Your Honor, I'm willing to post a bond. $50,000, Mr. Turner. My associate and his aunt are prepared to put their house up, Your Honor. Yeah, Your Honor, I feel that society would best be served by this young man's incarceration. Your Honor, this boy has never been in court before. I'm sorry, Counselor. I agree that this boy needs special care. Your Honor, uh, if 
If I may address the court, I would like to propose another alternative. Proceed, Dr. Hamill. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, as you are perhaps aware, the Hamill Foundation operates both a clinic and a summer camp that uh, is uniquely designed to accommodate the needs of serious young offenders. Judge, excuse me. We're all aware of Dr. Hamill's reputation, but uh, I feel that he's no more qualified than Mr. Turner to take care of this young man's problems. I'm not interested in how you feel. I'm satisfied that Dr. Hamill can adequately provide for this boy. Does defense have any objection? If Dr. Hamill's motion will keep my client out of Newton and see to it that his needs are taken care of, then the defense has no objection, Your Honor. Bail granted in terms discussed. Bailiff, call in the next case. So what's next, Doctor? Joe Casper represents exactly what is wrong with our community. I mean, what future can a youngster look forward to when the only things he's ever known are poverty, neglect, and violence? This boy deserves a chance, a second chance. I propose to give him that chance. Thank you, gentlemen. Come on, Joe. Thank you, doctor. Counselor, can we get a comment, please? Come on, Martha. I got things to do. I'll be a bit Excuse me. Any comment, counselor? No comment. How about you wrap it up, Bill? I'll catch you back at the station. Can I buy you lunch? No. Any idea who really planted the bomb, then? I know who didn't do it. You know, maybe we could work together on this. What do you say? I don't think so, Desmond. Well, you've got a boy's life to save, and uh, I might have answers to questions you haven't even asked yourself yet. Look, will you at least uh, think about it? I'll call you later. Hehehehe <laughs> 
Desmond? Desmond? on Sumac Street. That's good. Now give me the cabinet. That's nice. Beautiful. Another window. Good, okay. Okay, just give me a full frame shot of this and hold it. July 18th, mugging. Look, did they uh, get you in the alley? How many guys were there, do you know? Did you at least get a good look at them? How old were they? Have you ever seen them before? July 31st, harassment. Uh, ladies, can I talk to you? Uh, look, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where'd you get that bruise on your neck? Who did that to you? Well, you know, these guys picked us up. What guys? We got in the car and started beating up on us. Yeah, have you ever seen them before? It's my hand. And Bruce here. Listen, who were these guys? Have you ever seen them before? Just some tough guys. Futures? <coughs> were they with a gang called the Futures? No. Future. Hungry? What is this? The Future. Pretty bleak, huh? Isn't that the gang that Joe runs with? You got it. A dozen or so vandalizations, four or five beatings, drug addict and prostitute harassment, abduction, always getting bigger and better. And now the bombing. Mm -hmm. It's quite a plot line. Yeah, all this from a blue-collar street gang. I mean, really, they're just a bunch of angry kids. It doesn't make sense. It's too organized. I mean, there has to be somebody guiding. What do you mean? Well, like a director, someone who's paying these hoodlums to break up the neighborhood. Since this group of players moved into the East End six months ago, 37 houses have been sold. Blockbusting? Uh-huh. That's a little far-fetched, isn't it? Really? Is it? Move over. Show you the future.
So why don't you and Sally come over for a barbecue tomorrow? Oh, it looks like we got ourselves a little crime in progress. Freeze! Can I at least get off the piss? I said freeze! Look, I'd like to take the cuffs off, but you're gonna have to tell me what happened to you. I already told you I fell down some stairs. Oh no, gee, that's too bad. You know, trespassing can be a very serious offense. They're working double shifts already, okay? If you need them, you need them. Send the papers up. I get the impression that our friend isn't going to be very helpful. Life is tough all over. Yeah, for you it's gonna get a lot tougher. Those kids didn't plant that bomb. How do you know that? Because my client told me. Excuse me. Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, ma'am. You can't go in. We're old friends. Mind if I join the party, gentlemen? I wondered how long it would take you to show up. Are you okay, T.S.? I'm okay. What's going on? We're just asking your partner a few friendly questions. What are the charges? We're considering trespassing and, uh, break and enter? Oh, and don't forget the destruction of property and withholding information. I see. Well, while you gentlemen make up your minds, why don't you take the cuffs off? All we want is a little cooperation, that's all. We're all on the same side. I'm on my client's side. That puts you on the wrong side. That's a matter of opinion, Detective. You're a very lucky boy, Turner. I'm starting to enjoy this. Ah! Whoa, whoa, T.S. I'll take the keys. Let's go. Sorry to ruin your evening. Do that again and you're busted to traffic. What happened? I was on the wrong side of a pickup truck. Where you been? Talking with Desmond Thomas. Seems somebody's trying to run people out of the neighborhood. Well, it ain't Mr. Rogers, that's for sure. Unless he helping the neighborhood kids make bombs. Go home, get some rest. I know one thing. Tomorrow ain't gonna be such a beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> Joe, it's, it's horrible to see people in that condition. I've seen it worse. Yeah, I'm sure you have, Joe. You know, I've heard about these places. You brainwash people. Oh, is that what you've heard? That's right. Well, if that's what you've heard, then let me show you how we brainwash people, okay? Just uh, try and keep them calm. I'll be right back. This is the first step. Get them as young as we can. While both parents are out holding down two jobs to support the family. Hey, yeah. How's it going, kids? Fine. I'm sure you have that fixed in no time, right? <laughs> we don't charge them anything. We feed them. Sometimes we clothe them. And we uh, provide them with a kind hand. When they get older, we really take advantage of them. Come on, I'll show you what I mean. We give them jobs, some sense of uh, dignity and purpose. Right, Tina? Yes, Dr. Hammond. <laughs> who knows, maybe even some hope for the future. Yeah, slave labor. Well, how are my galley slaves today? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Great, Dr. Hammond. <laughs> Actually, they can come and go as they please, and uh, we even give these slaves an allowance. Fine. Come on. Hey, see how brainwashed there? Joey could do. He didn't come back to play basketball. Look out! Shoot it up there. Or <laughs> to uh, take a few classes. Sometimes just to say hello. Some of them even come to my camp in the summertime. Dog, Joe. Joey's over there, but he wants to talk to you. Big 
She's willing to drop the charges against you. You tell me who the leaders of the gang are. I'm not a squealer. I know you're not, Joe. I just want you to know the type of things your friends are into. They're cleaning up the neighborhood. They may have started out that way, but they ended up harassing innocent people like Clara Bowman. Well, some of them didn't belong there. Oh, I see. So tell me, Joe, how do you and your gang decide who belongs? Is it the color of their eyes? The color of their hair? Or is it the color of their skin? You see, Joe, the point I'm trying to make is that in this country, you can't say who belongs and who doesn't just by looking at them. You're just doing what we thought was right. I understand, Joe. It's not your fault. It's not the fault of the game. Somebody was just paying you guys to scare everybody out the neighborhood. I don't know anything about that. I believe you, Joe, but you gotta help me. You must have seen something. What about a guy driving a pickup truck? I don't know who drives it. Only Stark knows that. Is he the leader? What can you tell me about him? He drives a motorcycle. What kind? A Harley. A Harley? Mm. Hey, Joe, I haven't forgotten the promise I made to you on the bridge the other night. Yeah, I got something for you. Go ahead. It's better than a safety pin. You take care of yourself. And I'll come back next week and take you to the football game. All right. Take care. caliber. Turn her, big boy. What's going on, brother? <laughs> Just the everyday problems of your typical businessman. Man, I thought I was in the wrong place. Where's all the hogs? There's more money in rice burners, T.S. Less work, too. I can dig it. Follow me. Of course, uh, nothing rides like a Harley. Yeah, tell me, anybody else around here still rat them? You know the code of a hog dealer. Closed mouth, open palm. Of course, for a brother, it could be the other way around. I assume this isn't a social call. Who or what are you looking for? Some new street gang in the neighborhood calls themselves the future. They lead a riot to Harley. You mean Starkey? You know him? I know nothing he could do would surprise me. How about murder? What do you say we go out and kick over a couple of rocks? I like that. How about tell me a story on the way? All right. Desmond. 
told you that the only way that I am going to agree to this is if you can guarantee me I won't be on camera. All my wife has to do is stay in the living room and she'll be okay. I'm not your wife. Yes, but you will be for the next half hour. <laughs> Longest half hour I'll ever spend. <laughs> and I'll enjoy every minute of it. That must be the real estate woman. Okay, you ready? Uh, yeah, Pat, uh, hey, tape. how's this? Uh, it's fine. Not coming off? No, let's Good. go. Let's do it. Clara Bowman, Linda Wallowich, Metro County Real Estate. I thought I asked you not to put a sign up. I can't wait all day, Ms. Wallowich. You're half an hour late. Actually, I was thinking of a window with postmodern casings. What do you think? Oh, really? Mm-hmm. You know what that means, darling. Yes, I know. Vertical, Vertical blinds. blinds. <laughs> Excuse me. And on this one, I thought perhaps we could knock the whole thing out. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Do a sort of an open concept kitchen thing. Yes, yes, let's consider that. It would be good. And in the cathedral Who ceiling... Who are these people? Let's just Mr. have a Thompson look at the figures. and his lovely wife, Yvonne, they just bought the joint. Hey, what? I thought we had a deal. Oh, you made a verbal offer. They put it in writing. My principal is prepared to offer you $150,000 in cash. $175. Well, I think we have the right to make a counter offer. Uh, just wait one minute, Miss... Um... No, you wait a minute, Mr. Thompson. This doesn't close until midnight. My client has until then to better your offer. Darling, just as long as he puts it in writing. Now, Mrs. Bowman, we had a deal. I'm sorry, sport. Business is business. I'd like to talk to your buyer. Well, he prefers to remain anonymous. I don't believe this. I suggest you get him on the horn. Do you have a private phone I could use? In the kitchen. Excuse Mrs. me. Mrs. Bowman? Darling! What? Well, if you're not prepared to do something about this, I certainly am. I don't know who you're working for, but let me assure you, we will not be pushed around like now, this. Now, now, Yvonne, just let her finish her call, then we'll make ours. You promise? Yes, absolutely. Now, come on, sir. It's all yours. Game's over. Go fix your makeup. Hey, what's going on? Better let it go. You got a question you wanted to ask, T.S.? Yeah. When was the last time you stopped breathing, brother? What? What are you talking about? You tell us who you're working for, and this won't be that time. I don't know what you're talking about! Go one up. Ah! I can't breathe! Don't stay up there, brother. I can't breathe! Well, what's that name? I don't know what you're talking about. Stop. Twilight Zone. Ah! I'll tell you! Did you catch that, T.S.? Sound like walking to me. Bug walk. Thank you, Mr. Stark, for your cooperation. Oh. Oh. Hey, they make a nice pair of crutches. You're all hired, you know that, T.S.? Somebody gotta be a good guy.
Isn't it a little late for an investment company to be open? No, smart money never sleeps, counselor. Come on. Locked, I'm not staying here. Look, Counselor, do you want to find out who's buying all this real estate or not? Not this way, I don't. It's locked. Come on, I'm going. Just a second. It's open. Are you coming? No. Fine. Desmond! What? I could get this barred for this. Yeah, I know. Don't worry about it. I've done this before. Come on. Oh, that's terrific. This place is empty. Come here, come here. Empty. Bingo. What? Oh, my, a veritable beehive of modern business. Look at this. Five telephone numbers, five investment companies. My guess is each one of these is buying up chunks of the neighborhood. Let me give a listen to these guys. This is Avalar Holdings. If this concerns the sale of this is Cirrus Securities. If this concerns the sale of the house, please leave the ask for the house. This is Mr. Telltrust. This is Mr. Telltrust. of Metro County Real Estate. Ms. I've got Wallowich. a problem with Clara Bowman. It seems that another... All we have to do is find out who's answering these messages, and I'll let you ten to one. It's the guy who's paying the future to drive these people out of the name. Yeah, but that means we're back to square one. Yeah, I know. We've got to find something else. Oh! Shh! 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 Hello, this is Mrs. Sarah Petty calling. I have a home at 96 Beach Street, and my asking price is Caddies, even when I'm open. Maybe I can use your phone. Hey, don't touch anything. Evening, brother. Don't ever call me that. Why is that, brother? Because I ain't your brother, and I ain't your father. And what I am, you'll never be. And what might that be, brother? Take a good look and guess. I don't have to guess, Mr. Walton. I already know I'll never be a worthless, murdering piece of garbage like you. Sorry, it ain't there. 
piece of pipe. Oh, sure. Filled with enough black powder to turn your car into a heavy metal storm. Oh, man. It's charcoal, potassium, sulfur. Man, it's easy. You can make one of these at home. Close your eye. Put it down and just keep still, would you? I can't, Dicker. Not until I figure out what Walton planned to do with it. Close your eye. Walton who? Bud Walton. My slam dancing partner at the body shop. Oh, him. T.S., please, I just cleaned the place. Oh, man. Tell me, what you doing tomorrow? I don't know. It's Sunday, I guess I'm resting. No, you're not. Here, this bird's for you. In just a few short hours from now, in this quiet neighborhood gospel church, community organizer Dr. David Hamill is expected to endorse the mayoral candidacy of the Reverend Franklin Pierce, giving Pierce a tremendous leg up in his campaign bid to become this city's first black mayor. Framing this ongoing story is the racial strife that has ripped the east end of this city apart in recent weeks. As you can see behind me, police security is extremely tight here this morning as police fear a repeat of the tragic bombing that occurred the last time. What are you so nervous about? I'm the one who's singing. Here, let me fix it for you. Okay, let's do it like that. How long has it been since you've been in church, Dick? Ah, not so tight. I gotta breathe. I was there about Christmas. Christmas? That's shameful. It's about time T.S. made a positive impression on you. Here, now try and keep it like that. Wonder what those two are doing back there. Thanks. This is not a normal human being here. We talking substandard life form. This guy's a real reptile. So everybody's supposed to stay home? That might not be a bad idea. No, then he wins. We're all going to the church. Thanks for being so concerned. Come on, you two. <laughs> now, Reverend Pierce, aren't you afraid that the financial support being offered by the Hamill Foundation could compromise the autonomy of the mayor's office? On the contrary, Mr. Thomas. I welcome Dr. Hamill's advice and support. Far beyond political ends, this alliance could signal a new coalition between blacks and whites in our community. Shoot a family outing. Couldn't take the day off, eh, Trent? Somebody gotta do your job. Yeah, yeah, and you're a wise guy. If you told us what you had on Walton, he'd be in custody by now. Yeah, sure. Just like you rounded up them kids the other night. Dick, I'll keep your eyes open. Dr. Hamill, I was wondering if we could have a, a quick word with you. Let's see why Just not. A quick question before you go in. Does the financial support that your foundation has offered the Pierce camp perhaps represent 
a first step into the political arena. Could we say this? Uh, <laughs> no. No, it's, uh, it's men like uh, Reverend Pierce who uh, belong in public office, uh, not me. <laughs> anyway, I have to go now. All the questions you want later, Des. Come on, Thank Joe. Thank you very much, Doctor. Uh, good morning, Mr. Turner. Yeah, Dr. Hamo. Joe. I have a couple of things to sort out with a reverend. Why don't you uh, stay and talk to Mr. Turner, Joe? I'll see you up front. Joe, you're really looking good. Dr. Hamlin's taught me a lot. I wish I had known him a long time ago. Yeah, he's a good man. Mr. Turner, I owe you an apology. About what I said on the bridge. I didn't know what I was talking about. Hey, Joe, it wasn't nothing. We all say some things we don't mean sometimes. Really, it wasn't nothing. Excuse me, Mr. Turner. I should get up to the front with Dr. Hamill. Okay. Talk to you later. Be good. This guy would have to be out of his mind to try anything in here. What makes you think you got a man to start with, Decker? Brothers, I got them mouth for me. Thanks. Before we commence today's service, I would like to take a few moments to mention a pressing political issue. The Lord works in wondrous and mysterious ways. The recent tragedy our community has suffered has served not to divide us, but to bring us together. I am pleased to announce that Dr. David Hamill is joining my campaign. Now that I've won the nomination with Dr. Hamill's support, I can promise you a breaking down of barriers and a bringing together of new energies, unprecedented in this city, perhaps even in this country. In the course of my campaign, you've heard me speak of the need for a simple, straightforward communication. The armed camps and rival factions have torn the social fabric of our community and undermined its institutions. <laughs> Cut an oak tree off from its roots, and a puff of wind will blow it over. But feed it pure water, and it will lay enough seed to sprout a forest. Now let us all rise and offer up a song of hope for renewal. If you feel guilty, been living in sin, just come to Jesus, I'm sure he'll take you in. He'll turn the darkness, he'll turn it. sleep.
Good night, Joe. Good night, Doctor. If you don't mind, Doc, I just mix myself a cup of coffee. Come on. Come on in. Close the door. You're very good. You know that? Very good. It took me a while, but I figured out why you were friendly to that uh, Negro preacher. I'm sorry, I have no idea what you're talking about. The land was easy. You hire a few punks, give them some cheap dope. Fill their heads with a little hate, encourage them to fight the system, nothing to it, right? And pretty soon, the black folks and others are moving out faster than the train with Polish Jews on it. Now, what do you get? You get cheap real estate. That's really smart. But I'm seeing something else. I think that's enough. That's exactly what I thought, too. I was thinking this guy's a straight arrow. Find you playing lawn jockey to some reverend bus driver turned politician. Then you asked me to take him out. And suddenly I got the whole picture. And so what was the picture? Correct me if I'm wrong, Doc, but you were doing all this to become mayor, didn't you? Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I knew it! I knew it. <laughs> Keep your voice down, there are people sleeping here. All right, Walton, what is it you want? Money? That's going to be delivered to you tomorrow, just like we agreed. All right. I want to be part of this. No, you've done your part. Now I think you should leave the way you came in. Ah, not good enough, Doc. Mm -mm. I don't intend to be no sap on the run. Or you're pushing buttons at City Hall. I'm the guy who started this, all right? I want to work with you. <laughs> <laughs> who do you think you are? I mean, the real estate setup was mine. I am the one who told you where to put the bomb in that community hall. I am the one who set up the Pierce plan. Now you, you are just an instrument. I'll tell you what, Doc. I am the guy who can take you down. I see what you mean. Hmm. I think I've greatly underestimated you, Mr. Walton. That's right, you have. What if I were to make you an offer? I told you, no money. No, 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 but money. Money that can buy us time. Time for me to get elected. Time for things to die down. Time for you to become anonymous. And then what? Then you come back here, and I make a place for you. A good place? The best place. How do I know I can trust you? How do I know I can trust you? <laughs> 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 I think that I should get the money for you right now, so that you can get out of here. <laughs> you killed my mother! Get up!
Have a safe trip. Don't you want to count it first? It's not all there. I'll be back. So far, I've found proxies for Surex Securities and Escrieve Investments. And? Well, they both have separate boards, but they do have one thing in common. Radcliffe Holdings is their major shareholder. Uh-huh. Interlocking directorates. Good hunting. Interlocking directorates? So? Alibar Holdings and Lithgatel Trust. Separate boards of directors, except for Radcliffe, which, according to the incorporation papers, owns majority interest in all of them. You're certainly an inspiration, Miss Taylor. <laughs> Don't mention it, Bertram. Listen, is the coffee still hot? Absolutely. Thanks. Miss Taylor? Oh, forget it, Bertram. You find what you wanted? Sort of. I beg your pardon? Well, now I have to search land ownership. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Taylor. That, that's not my department. Figures. All the owners of Radcliffe Holdings live at some place called Sugate Farms. There's just Sugate Farms? That's Dr. Hamill's place. What did you say? Sugate Farms. I was up there once. It was weird. How weird? Weird enough to make law school look like a day at the beach. Thanks, Bertram. Call me when you get out of school. Joey's not here, Mr. Taylor. Is everything okay? I was supposed to take him to a football game. Well, I know Joe was really upset this morning, and Dr. Hamill just thought he needed a little rest. Where did he go? To Dr. Hamill's summer camp. Did his camp have a name? Yeah, it's called Sugate Farms. This is Desmond Thomas. At the moment, I'm on an important story in an improbable location. I'll be back on the next international flight. Ciao. Don't you wish. Listen, Desmond, when you're finished your coffee, meet me at the office. The word is Radcliffe. What's a Radcliffe? It's a holding corporation. Owns the five companies that have been buying up all the land on the east side. That's why I wanted you along with all your gear. T.S. is going to meet us here later. Can I help you? Is this the road to Dr. Hamill's farm? Excuse me. I asked you a question. He's not in right now. That's strange. His secretary said he came up here early this morning. I don't think you understand, mister. He's not in. Say what, brother? Say he's not in. Gee, that's too bad. I was hoping to pay him a visit. I was wondering if you guys could get on the phone and call up to the house just to check. Well, actually, it'd be a, a lot of trouble for us to do that, mister. And I don't think you're looking for trouble, are you? I suggest that you two gentlemen get on the phone and call Dr. Hamill and tell him T.S. Turner is here to talk to him. What's all this about? Second here. Desmond Thomas, Metro Live News. Dr. Hamill is expecting it. What'd you do, take a shortcut? Uh, we have an appointment. Glad you showed up. I was about to get real mad. What I'm about to tell you, Joe, you must understand completely. Give me alone. 
is forget the past, Joe. It's over and done. Only the future is important. I'm not a part of you. Oh, yes, you are, Joe, and I'm a part of you. People need what we are together. You killed my... No, I didn't, Joe. That's a lie from an evil man. He died for what he did. Oh, it... It was... It was... Joe. You killed my mother! Joe, no. You killed her! No! Joe. You killed my mother! No, Joe, I... You, you killed my mother! I'm your father now, Joe. I am the one who is going to stay with you, Joe. Desmond Thomas and Amanda Taylor are on their way up to see you, Doctor. Thank you, John. And they're with a black gentleman. Mr. Turner, I presume. Under no circumstances is he to enter this room, you understand? Yes, sir. Good. Good morning, Daz. Miss Taylor, I guess you'd like to see Joe, Mr. Turner. Yes, how is he, Doc? Well, he's a little shaken up, I'm afraid. That's why I brought him up here. I thought the fresh air would do him some good. Well, come on in. Okay. Yeah, this room would be great, actually. Sir, yeah, I'll take those. Thanks. This way, Mr. Turner. It's a beautiful place you got here. Yes, my boys really love it. Can I get you a cold drink while you're waiting, Mr. Turner? If you need anything, just call me. I'll be outside the door. Thank you. Desmond, I'd just like to say I appreciate the opportunity you're giving me to uh, make a statement at this time. Uh, I think it's important that we all face facts and uh, try to understand where we are. This is a very difficult time for me. We appreciate that, Doctor. Are you ready? Uh, I think so. I think we can begin then. Now, Dr. Hamill, in the past few months, you've become a very, very public figure, and yet the people of this city know very little about you. Well, uh, let me say this, Desmond. Uh, I, I have nothing to hide. <laughs> uh, as you know, I've uh, spent uh, most of my professional life as a surgeon, and I, I'd like to feel that the... Uh, uh, my reputation can be judged uh, on the quality of my work. You've also done extremely well financially, haven't you? Yes, I've been uh, fortunate in my business dealings. Indeed. Mm -hmm. In fact, is it not true that you own five holding companies that are buying up chunks of land in the east end of this city? <laughs> no. <laughs> you've, uh, you've put me in a very difficult spot there, Desmond. I've been uh, keeping those properties out of the public eye for quite some time now. Why do you want to keep them a secret, Doctor? Well, they're not a secret exactly, but uh, then I suppose they are. The fact of the matter is that it's a package that is going to be handed over to the city for low-cost housing. And I suppose this is as good a time as any to make that announcement. That the best way to redevelop a community is to redevelop the people first. And I'm proposing urban renewal that generates jobs in the community for the community. The two things that we have on the east side are manpower and time. And uh, you see, I believe that, uh, that people must have a part in making their lives better. Uh, they must, of course, have the initiative and the will to make the changes necessary. 
I believe they also need encouragement, both financially and motivationally. And uh, that's what this program was designed to accomplish. Um, I think that you'll find that that my plan will alter the face of the East Side. And I, I don't just mean the buildings, but uh, the people of the community as well. Many of the people whose houses you're buying feel like they're being pushed out of the neighborhood. Aren't you concerned that this could be construed as blockbusting? No, no, no. Blockbusting destroys communities. I, I'm trying to uh, strengthen and uh, develop. Your idea of welfare seems a little peculiar concerning your alleged affiliation with Bud Walton and the local street gang. <laughs> now, that is a pretty serious accusation. Well, is Mr. there any truth to this persistent rumor, Doctor? Well... Rumors of conspiracy are as fashionable as they are erroneous uh, these days, Desmond. I think you'll agree. What's wrong, brother? Like you've seen a ghost. Nothing. It's Joe. They can't find him, apparently. Gee, that's too bad. Maybe he'll be back tonight. Tomorrow morning, actually. Well, I guess I have to come back another day. Reverend Pierce has left us a great legacy. Thank you very much, Dr. Hamill. Actually, there is one thing I would like to add, Desmond, if you don't mind. All right, I think we have enough tape. Yep. Yep, just let me get you in close up here. Good. All right, whenever you're ready. Oh. Uh, what I would like to say is that um, when Reverend Pierce died, we were deprived of a very important voice in this community. And in an attempt to fill that void, I would like to announce my candidacy for mayor. I'm sure that will come as no surprise to anyone. I, I'm sorry we weren't able to find Joe, Mr. Turner. Maybe in a couple of days. Yeah. Okay. I'll come back then. Good. Thank you. What's on your mind, T.S.? Joe, for some reason or another, Dr. Hamill didn't want me to talk to him. What are you doing? This farm ain't no boys' camp. Why do you say that? You ever seen chickens lay eggs like this? I'm gonna take a closer look at the house. I'm gonna need you guys' help. <laughs> Unit 1 to Main House, Unit 1 to Main House. Main House, go ahead, Unit 1. Yeah, we got a little problem down here. What's the problem? Looks like those visitors. You mean the reporter and his pals? Yeah, they're loose on the estate. That is the Turn armory, the isn't it? Turn the camera on! We have permission from Dr. Hamill for this. George, you want to get over here right away, please? George? Hey, put down the camera! I said whose orders would that be? I don't think that's any concern of yours. Where's the other one? I haven't seen him. Look, I'm with the press. I got a press card right here. Amy, get that. It's in my pocket. My press card. Thank you. Okay, nobody move. Everybody stand back. Get away from the door. Back off. Everybody back off. Jasper, get out! Come on, get out of here! Get out of here! Get out of here! Get out of here! Get down!
Come on out, Joe. I won't hurt you. Where are you, Joe? Huh? up there, isn't it? Don't you want to come down? I don't want to hurt you, Joe. Don't push me, Joe. I could shoot you down right now if I wanted to. No condition to be up there. I'm warning you. Scary up there, isn't it? Especially up here. It's very dangerous. See? See how dangerous it is? I love you, Joe, but sacrifices have to be made for the future. Mr. Turner, you're a very sick man, Doc. I've come too far to stop by the likes of you. You're not going nowhere, Doc. Straight line. 